called a crystal flash soft tackle. Again, it's a lake fly. I mean, we're getting ready for lake fishing. Uh, just trying to get a few flies in there that have worked for me. Um, hopefully they will work for you. I, again, it's a bead head. I have pinched the barb on the fly, on the hook. I don't know why I say on the fly all the time. And I'll come to the rear. Now, this fly has no tail. You can tie this, it's going to be, the body is going to be crystal flash. You can tie it either black or green. I brought black today. It doesn't matter what it is you want to tie. Just clip off four, five, six strands. Remember, the, the more you clip off, the thicker the body will be. And I got one little tiny short one. And tie those in. I don't care how long they are because I'm going to pull them through so I don't have to reach up there and clip them off. Just save yourself a step by doing that. And, and I, I lay, leave my scissors in my hand. I don't lay my scissors down. Um, there's times that I probably should, uh, especially if you're tying outdoors. I tie a lot while my wife and I are camping. And if a yellow jacket or something is coming by, I have to be awful careful I'm not swatting at that yellow jacket with fly scissors in my hand. But if I lay them down, it takes too much time to pick them up. What I'm going to do now is just twist this, this uh, crystal flash together. And again, just make a little rope out of it. Each time you go around, you're going to have to twist them again because they will come unwound. And just right to the front almost to the front. This is soft tackle fly. Works very, very well. Any soft tackle, in my opinion, is the way to go. It just, to me, it just really works well. Now that may be enough. Move that forward. Yep, that'll be enough right there. I want to tie that off. Now that gives that body as the fly goes through and it's going to be deeper than some because of the bead but it's going to show a lot of flash it really is now right here I'm going to whip finish three four five wraps that's all you need get rid of the thread and shove that bead to the rear start your tying thread again Get it on the hook. Well, I'll clip it off. And come back almost to the bead. And I'm going to take a, a Hungarian partridge feather, uh, just a brown. You could use brown uh, a hen hackle if you wanted. Just something soft that's going to move in the water. I have taken the feather now. I have it upside down, or the dull side up. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of all of that fuzz. You don't need it. Now, the underside or dull side is still up. I'm going to strip that off. That one half of that feather is now gone. The dull side that is to me is all gone. I'll turn that over, fold all those others back, and this feather will be tied in by the tip. Now by doing that, by pulling all those fibers off, pull that through, by pulling those fibers off like that, it will make the, fly, the feather, the fiber of the feather, lay back naturally and it will not be as heavily hackled as if you'd have left both sides on. You can leave both sides on if you like, it's not a big deal. Now, here it goes around the hook three four five wraps because remember this is not a real heavy hackle here because I've taken half of it away you see how those fibers just naturally go to the rear get all that bound down and I'll reach in here and clip that off Bind down all those little butts. 
and put a whip finish on it again. Now what this does, the thing I really like about this, and I've seen a few flies like this, what this does, as this fly goes through the water, the fibers will collapse over that bead, but they will not totally collapse flat around the, the body of the fly. And they will work faster in the water this way, giving that kicking motion. But that's just a little crystal flash bead head, a very, very good fly. Tie them in many sizes. This happens to be a 12. Uh, man alive, you can tie them all the way up to an 8 if you want to get a big one. And some damselfly hatches can get very large. Uh, I have been on damselfly hatches in lakes, well, especially over in Montana. Uh, there's a little lake on the Indian Reservation over there. The, the damselfly hatches at times would be so thick, they're crawling down the collar of your shirt. They're in your hat. They're just everywhere. And some of them are quite large. Uh, I remember that particular trip. We got to watching close into where the cattails, the willows, were sticking up out of the water. If you see one of them moving, the cattail or willow moving, cast to that spot. Because the fish learn that the damsels will crawl up that willow, they will sit there till their wings dry and then fly off. The fish will go in and bump that willow and knock that fly off. And that's what they're feeding on. So try that. It's an excellent fly for lakes. Lake season's coming up. Give it a try. See what you think.